What's up guys? Welcome back to Natalie's Retail Room. Today, this is your host, Natalie. Yeah. And always, your host, As always, Kevin. Special guest, and always, all of us, Casper the Friendly Ball Python. What's up guys, and welcome back to our coolest prehistoric reptile series. Ready to get into it? You yeah. ready for some learning? Yeah. Let's do some learning. And do you remember who our last prehistoric reptile was? The uh, Wanambi. Wanambi, which if they want to watch that one, they can watch it right. Right there. Right there. And if there. you want to watch this one, you can watch it right there. Or they can just stay on this screen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as always, Natalie and I did a absolutely beautiful drawing of today's reptile. Yep. And it's kind of important that we have him. But that's a that's a good drawing. Buddy, you did not look like that. <laughs> Say hi to your ancestors. Say hi to your legs. <laughs> but today is going to be a short one because so little is known about this reptile. But they are still incredibly important in understanding how snakes evolved. And believe me, you'll like this one. Yeah. <laughs> you already got an idea. Today, we are talking about Eupodophus. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> Scientific name, Eupodophus descansi. But you try pronouncing that. Try saying what I just said. Eupodophus? Eupodophus. Descansi. Descansi. Yeah, that's pretty good. Which yeah. was named after the French naturalist Dieter Disconzi. This was a snake of the Squamata order of the Similadafe family, which is a group of extinct marine snakes. Marine snakes. But basically extinct sea snakes. And you know how much we like sea snakes. Sorry for all the jump cuts there. That's, uh, that's dad trying to pronounce all these words. <laughs> <laughs> but they lived on this planet during the late Cretaceous. So they were a marine reptile during the late Cretaceous. And I mean, they shared the ocean with some pretty scary creatures like that long what? ago. Like the Mosasaurus. So they uh, they had a rough time, I'm sure, back then. What, 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 like... what is a Mosasaurus? Yeah. Well, we're gonna be getting into some marine reptiles here in our next prehistoric one. No, can you tell me what that thing is? It's like a very large, like, cross between a crocodile and like a fish. Well, more like a crocodile and a shark. Ah! So, wait till we do him. The first fossils of this prehistoric were discovered in Cenomanian aged limestone. It's like kind of like rock. And that's where they discover like a lot of fossils is like in rocks. But this is in Lebanon, which is an absolutely beautiful place that Natalie and I would love to visit one day. Yeah, I would like to visit snakes. Discovery. The snake discovery place, we definitely will one day. The fossils of Eupodophis were only 85 centimeters long, which to us is like 2.8 feet, which is relatively small. That's that's not that big. Uh, Two feet? Yeah. That's like as long as that. So that's not too big, especially compared to like some of the other ones we've done, like Wanambi and Titanoboa. Yeah, Titanoboa were like huge. Massive. Way bigger than a half. But these fossils dated back to approximately 92 million years ago. That's a long, long time. For the state now? Yes. But those fossils came all the way back from 92 million years ago. But to put that size more in perspective for you, that's about the same size as Kai. Huh? The fossils uh, of Eupodophis. Uh, so, not that big. Yeah, it's only bad like that. Right. All right, now let's get into the coolest and most important part of this little snake, their appearance. But what do you think Eupodophis look like? Uh, I think they look cool. Look cool? Yeah. Kind of like this? Yeah. I think so. But I don't think that, but it didn't, but that's all black. And the, and yeah, if he was like 
we put like an ocean background in it. Yeah. Yeah, that would do it. Yeah. The most important thing about Eupotiphus was that they had smaller hind legs. So as we drew in our picture here, they actually had hind legs. And then what were you going to tell everybody about Kai? Guess what? Or Casper. Casper. Guess what? Look at this. This is a really cool thing. But it can tell what it looks like. What are those? Spurs from their legs. Spurs from when snakes have evolved over millions of years. You might see it. Well, we're going to put like a little picture right here. We'll actually show Casper's spurs. Yeah. Just like in this picture here, the yeah. tiny hind legs. Yeah. So, as you just mentioned there, snakes did used to have legs and are almost entirely gone now. Do you know why almost? Why? Because, like you just said, for the most part, they have lost their legs, but the remnants of legs are still there with the spurs. So, most noticeably on male ball pythons, but other boas and other pythons have spurs as well. They have what looks like little claws, which are actually the spurs, like you just said. Yeah. These are the vestial remnants of hind legs, yeah. of when they used to have hind legs. Yep. Pretty crazy. Uh -huh. That's really crazy. Yeah. DNA evidence shows that snakes are closely related, are most closely related to monitor lizards and iguanas, but through evolution branched off into what we know today as snakes. I think what we're going to do one day is do a full video on like specifically the evolution of snakes, but only three specimens of fossilized snakes with legs exist which makes the information that we know and that scientists have accumulated from those specimens very, very limited. But you, now going to school, can become a biologist one day where you would learn about the evolution of snakes and everything like that. Yeah, and I can tell everybody about it. You'd be way smarter than Dad. Yeah, and then <laughs> you can just be my I'll be the dad and then you can be my kid. What? I'll be your secretary? Yeah. <laughs> the hind limbs on the skeleton found were only 0.8 inches. That's tiny. So they were very tiny legs. But that to me... Uh, a little bigger than that. But that to me shows that those legs were already on their way out. Because of how small they were. These legs had a tibula fibula, and femur, and the structure was very, very similar to monitor lizards and iguanas. How cool is that? That's awesome. <laughs> it is. Scientists also believe that these legs, these hind legs, were totally useless. They had no purpose whatsoever, and I mean, that's, that's interesting in itself because even ball pythons with those spurs use them for mating. Oh. So that's odd that their legs, those little hind limbs, were yeah. totally useless. Like, you can see why they would be useless, right? He's swimming around in the ocean. What's any legs for? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that would look kind of weird if they were like swimming around on the bottom of the ocean, just yeah. dragging those legs yeah, really across the ocean. <laughs> That wasn't the only interesting thing about their appearance. You know how Dad always says it's like cool how sea snake's tail has evolved to be like a flipper? Yeah, they'd be Rather like, than like a tail? Yeah, they'd be like... Right. Well, they had those too. They had that flipper-like tail too, which makes them one of the first snakes ever discovered to adapt to the ocean like that. That's pretty sweet, right? Yeah, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> and that leads us into our last part their habitat. As we had mentioned, they were a ocean-dwelling snake. So they lived in the ocean, but which ocean? The sea. The sea. That's a good answer. The ocean that they inhabited way back then was yeah. called the Mediterranean Tethys, which was a body of ocean that existed 541 million years ago to about 66 million years ago. 
Give or take a few million. As a marine reptile, they also needed to breathe air. So coming to the surface or even land to bask and catch their breath. Yeah. So even though they lived in the ocean, they still needed air, like me and you do. Yeah, but we don't live in the ocean. No, we don't live in the ocean. If you ask me, they must have had a pretty rough life. Yeah. Scary things that would eat them in the ocean and scary things that would eat them on land. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they had it rough either way. Yeah. Would sharks come over and try and eat them? There was prehistoric sharks back then that would eat them, all kinds of things. The ocean was a very scary place back then. All right, guys, and that does it for Eupotiphus. That was a cool snake, wasn't it? Yeah. Learning about snakes and legs? Yeah. That's crazy. And if you guys found this video informative or interesting, make sure to leave us a like and consider subscribing for more of our coolest prehistoric reptiles. I love learning about these. Yeah. We will see you on Saturday. Bye. Bye, guys.